This video will help you write the conclusion for our investigating acceleration lab, which we did in class. We're first going to look at some sample whiteboards of the lab results that we got, and then we're going to discuss what we learned during our conclusion discussion as a class that we did previously. So here's an example whiteboard from our data. We were looking at and trying to find the relationship between the acceleration of an object or a system of objects and its mass. Uh, when this group graphed acceleration versus mass, they found an inverse relationship. In order to find the equation for how acceleration is related to mass, they linearize this graph by graphing acceleration versus the inverse of mass or acceleration versus 1 over m. The slope of their line was about 1. It was 0.935 and the units were meters per second per second all divided by 1 over kilograms. That slope was multiplied by the inverse of mass. About half of our groups got this result with a slope of about 1. The other half of our groups got a whiteboard that looked like this. They also found that the relationship between the acceleration and the mass was an inverse relationship. They linearized that by graphing acceleration versus 1 over mass, but they had a slope of about 2. This group specifically got a slope of 1.831 meters per second per second divided by 1 over kilograms. So the equations that our groups got were, was either this, acceleration is equal to 1 something, all, this cra all these crazy units mean something, times 1 over mass, or acceleration is equal to 2 times 1 over mass. Now, in order for us to figure out what the slope means, we're going to have to simplify all these crazy units. In the beginning of the lab, we talked about the fact, based on some previous results that we found investigating gravity, the gravitational field strength, and the acceleration caused by gravity, we discussed that the units of a newton per kilogram is the same thing as a meter per second per second. You can solve this for newtons by multiplying each side by kilograms to get the definition of a newton being a kilogram times a meter per second per second. Using either of these two statements, you can simplify the units of the slope to just newtons. Everything cancels out and it just becomes newtons. And so we see here that our slope, if it's in newtons, must be some kind of a force. And so the groups that had one had something that felt a force of one newton constantly throughout the entire lab. The groups that had a slope of 2 had something in their lab throughout their entire lab that felt a force of 2 newtons. Uh, in our discussion, the, we realized that that force was actually the force of gravity specifically on the hanging mass, the hanging mass which was doing the accelerating of our system. So our general equation turns out to be acceleration is equal to the force of gravity in the hanging mass times 1 over the mass. Now we can actually go one step further. Let's look back at the force diagram for our system. We had our cart, our frictionless cart, our extra mass, and our hanging mass, and on our system we define the system to be the entire thing, the hanging mass and the car and the added mass. We found out that out of all these five forces, if we were going to add up the forces on the system, that the force of gravity and the normal force cancel each other out, they're equal in size and opposite in direction. We also discussed that these two tension forces are both also equal in size and opposite in direction, so they cancel each other out. Their effects do on our system. So the only force left over when we add up all five forces in the system is the force of gravity on the hanging mass. So we see that this force of gravity on the hanging mass, which we said was the slope of our equation, is also equal to the sum of the forces on the whole system. So if we take the equation, acceleration is equal to 2 newtons times 1 over mass. If that 2 newtons was the force of gravity in the hanging mass, we just saw now, or reminded ourselves, that that is also equal to the sum of the forces on the whole system. So our final general equation is this. Acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces times the inverse of mass, or 1 over mass. And if we combine these two things together to simplify it a little bit, we get this that acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces on a system divided by the mass. This is actually known as Newton's second law of motion, which basically says that as the sum of the forces gets larger on an object, or a system of objects, the acceleration will increase. 
we can see that these two things are proportional, directly proportional. Looking at this equation, if mass gets bigger, since it's in the denominator or the bottom of a fraction, if mass gets bigger, that suggests that the acceleration is going to get smaller. When we look at the units, we take the sum of the forces in newtons divided by a mass in kilograms, that's newtons per kilogram, it does give us units of meters per second per second. So a force divided by a mass will give us an acceleration.